don't have anything hanging out of my my teeth or anything. I don't know. Why don't you ask the hundred ladies that are watching you? <laughs> are we on? Well, you are on. Oh, well, you should have said action. Well, action. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, it is so good to be back. I uh, haven't seen you guys in such a long time. Can you put your mask on, please? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't be walking around without that anywhere, I think. Um, that's why Kate is on the other end of the room here. Yeah, I don't want to stand next to him um, today. They tell me I'm not contagious anymore, so I'm... Uh, uh, he got my fingers crossed. I and we feel. are glad to have you back. Yes, yeah, so I am very, uh, very glad to be back. Um, by the way, I want to thank you while I've got camera all to myself today. This is kind of fun. Only for a little while. <laughs> um, I am uh, just very, very appreciative of all of the well wishes. I got text messages and emails and it went on and on and on. And again, you guys' support is amazing and um, it actually brings tears to my eyes. I, I was thinking the whole time, I really missed it, missed being here. Um, it, I, I was gone for 10 days. I've never had 10 days away from this place, um, believe it or not. So, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> Kate's not even paying attention to me. Well, what a surprise that is. Um, so... Anyway, again, I want to thank you all. I, I realize that I definitely picked the right occupation because I, I absolutely love this place and I love being a part of everything. And um, it was hard to be gone. And I really, really do uh, appreciate all the support that I got. So saying that, um, again, thank you so much. And it is very, very good to be back. Um, so today, I, 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 again, I missed you guys so much that I decided to take over uh, the camera. So um, we're going to be doing a project from back in the day. Um, I pulled one of my old Baby Lock Club projects, and um, we're going to be doing a Baby Lock Club pro project with IQ Designer. Um, we've got full instructions on this on the website right now. So we're going to be doing a little project that we did. Um, again, it was several years ago, but I think you'll like it because it really goes through um, some really fun basic stuff on IQ Designer. We're also gonna play with the lettering. We're also gonna be playing with the grouping tabs. So um, again, it's gonna be more of a lesson today. So it's, um, uh, but it is a lesson that you can print out and, and uh, play with on your own on your IQ designer. Um, also, I have a couple of jokes. They all say they're glad you're back. Oh, well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, all six of them? No. <laughs> um, all right, you guys ready for some jokes? Yes. These are uh, courtesy of Charlene. I know you've done some of them. Uh, Charlene Kreidler sent a whole list of them. Oh, really yeah, I had those printed, books. actually. Yeah, they're really cute. Um, I got a job at a bakery because I needed dough. That's cute, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that um, one was cute. Broken pencils are pointless. I did that one. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Shoot. Uh-oh. I bet you didn't do this one, though. Some of them aren't appropriate. You do know that, right? They are. No. When you get a bladder infection, you're in trouble. I did do that one. No way. Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Good job. Try no, again. No, shoot. I didn't like my beard at first, then it grew on me. I didn't do that one. No, I thought that was funny too. Yeah. And um, what do you call a dinosaur with an extensive vocabulary? A thesaurus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too fun. Okay. Okay. So we have something really fun to show you ladies today. Yay. Ta-da. Ta-da, that is right. I'm going to take and over the camera for this. This is addressed to... <laughs> To Miss Christine. To Miss Christine. Hopefully she's not watching. She is not at work today. She does not know it's arrived, although she probably got a notification from Kimberbell that it got delivered. But you know what? Too sad for her, right? She's not here. So we're going to take a peek and see what's inside. And then we're going to open it up for your suggestions on which projects you would like us to do as a virtual class for you. Or what projects you would like Christine and Amanda to do as a virtual class for you. <laughs> so good. let's take a peek and see what's in here. Did all of you get your Bella boxes? Hopefully you all know what a Bella box is. 
This is something you ordered directly from Kimberbell. This is not something we can sell to you. So you do I have to. I'm not ruining Christine's funder here. Yeah, probably. Christine isn't on here, so. I, I don't know if she's watching or not. And you know what? They tape this thing up like it's Fort yeah, Knox. They do. So it'll take us about an hour to get it open. Here we go. Drum roll. Oh, wait. We got two more pieces of tape. Oh. <laughs> I'm a little slow. You know, I want to just rip that from her hand and, and open this myself. Stop. <laughs> oh, it's winter 2020. It's winter 2020, and it's addressed to Christine, but oh, too bad she's not here. We have a really flat pillow. Oh, that's a pillow? That I is thought a it pillow. was packaging. No, that's pretty it's a funny. <laughs> Don't throw that away, ladies. Oh my, look, we have a mug rug and it's a teapot mug rug. I'm gonna have to make this one. So we've got a mug rug. We have a little house that lights up, 3D houses. Oh, that's gonna be fun. That'll be a good one to do. It would be. We have a quilted basket. We have another 3D house. We have a, a ton of projects. Wow. Photo frame. This is kind of fun. Verna, yours is lost. How'd you lose it? Look at all this stuff you get oh in this box. Gosh. This is pretty awesome. We have the chenille pillow. So you want to tell them what the Bella box is all about? Because um, I do all of you know about the Bella box? Hopefully you all do. Let us know if anybody doesn't know and we will. Yeah, exactly. We, we can go, go through it a little bit. Um, let's see what else, what other projects there are. I'm not sure. This is all the stabilizers. So it gives you all these projects. A pair projects. of socks. A pair of socks. Uh-huh. How cool. And the, um, a blank, one of their new pouches. Okay, so let's take a little look at the main projects that are in here. We have 3D houses. We have chenille do that pillow. We have they know how to do the mug rugs. rugs or a basket or a photo frame. So we've got five different projects in here. So let us know what you would like to see us teach you. So we will be doing a virtual class on um, on the projects. So let us know which ones you would like. Um, if we do it as an all day class, I think we could probably get like three of them done. So, Pam, the Bella box, just so you guys know, this is something, again, that Kimberbell does on their own. This is part of their um, uh, website. You can go online. Is it $99? It is. Yeah. yeah, it's $99, and you get everything it takes to make all of those projects. And, and again, it's something that, that they just do for their customers. So it's, a, it's really, really super cute. They do it uh, quarterly, I believe. Um, and it's $99 for the box, and they ship it directly to you. Once uh, we get the box and we get the projects made, we will be doing some of these virtually to, to help you uh, get through the projects. So that's what it's all about. Again, it's not ordered through us. It is ordered through, um, through Kimberbell, and we will be glad to teach you how to, how to do them, though. So please let us know if you... Um... If you decide that you want us to um, do a virtual for you, obviously we would be doing this just for education for you guys and to have a little Bella fun. Box fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let us know if that's something that you would be interested in. We're getting a in lot us. on the houses. On yeah, the they houses. want to do the house. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's good. So Okay, one other, and I hope that Christine is still my friend tomorrow when she comes in and sees what I did. What do you mean, think, still your friend? I think what I'm going to do is seal the box back up again. And then she won't know. So all of you ladies do not tell her that I opened her box. She I'm, probably is watching anyway, so. I don't know if she's watching. Oh, you know that. what? I forgot. We, we had something to give away. Well, we'll do that here in a minute because the person's on who I'm giving it away to. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um... So I want to talk about a brand new product from Janine Babbage. You know how we all love Janine Babbage. 
So this one is not a tri stand. This one is one of her square um, hanging ones. So this is a finished size of 12 by 15, just in time for you to get done for Christmas for next year. And it's called We Wish You. Um, so it's We Wish You a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And it is a really cute little wall hanging. And we have the perfect stand that will work with this. This is one of the Ackfield stands. So it's an actual stand as opposed to a hanger. And it has the Christmas theme with the holly leaves up on top. So I think this will be a perfect accompaniment for the brand new Good Wish You a Merry Christmas. It'll even fit in there, won't it? Oh, that's another um, one. Or if you don't want it as a stand, we also have it as a hanger. Now, I will tell you, all of these products we did not get online today. I um, apologize on that. So if you want to place an order for anything today, it will have to be done via the comments on here or a phone call to the store because we did not get this product up um, onto the Facebook Live section of the website. Everybody's saying they want to see you put the pillow back in the box mm. if you're going to repack it. They'll just be a missing it probably, pillow. It probably won't be pretty. That's right. So we probably shouldn't do it on camera. That's right. <laughs> all right. And you are all, 220 of you are my friends, so you don't repeat this to Christine when That's you see her or hear from her tomorrow. I missed the, all the questions, so but there's say, a ton we, of them. Um, by the way, we are giving away... No, that one's already been given away. That one's got a name attached to it that we haven't. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Only Patrick would try to give a second something, give it away. You can give that away that's in your left hand. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't even know what it is. Oh, yeah, it's our um, our one of our mysteries. I even helped sew this a little bit. Yeah, you did all of that beautiful free motion quilting right, on exactly. there. I remember that. Uh -huh. It was really good. Did you guys see how good I did on that free motion? Yeah. Anyway, um, Lisa, it's either Lisa or Lisa. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. It's Lisa. Sports. It's Lisa? Mm -hmm. Okay, Lisa, you won this wonderful little um, table topper. Um, we've got a whole bunch of stuff to send to you, so we're going to go ahead and put that in your box to send to you. So. <laughs> Rose says, Christine who? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny, funny Rose I <laughs> uh, right. hope she's so, not watching <laughs> um, are, are you ready, ready to get to yeah, yeah I'm ready okay that's good I am too regifting so, yeah I'm just going to package the whole box back up again and pretend we were never in there <laughs> I think they're talking about me trying to give away the prize. oh okay so here's what we're doing today um, so again, this was done entirely in the IQ designer. So again, I apologize for those of you who don't have a baby locker brother machine that has the IQ. Um, this project is completely done in that. Um, but again, I, hopefully it'll give you incentive to want to buy a baby locker brother because this is very cool technology. I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. Um, uh, also, if you don't have IQ, but you still have the Baby Locker Brother machine, we are going to cover some features in the, in the machine. We did it again. What? Apparently, Lisa won yesterday, too. <laughs> <laughs> we don't communicate very well between the Littleton store and this store. That makes me laugh. Lisa, it must be your lucky day. <laughs> your lucky week. Yeah, we should really start watching these. Oh, lives. let's pull another name. We should. Probably. Yeah, uh, let's okay. pull another name sorry, and Lisa. no, we'll we'll still we'll her, still yeah, give her that one. Idea. Absolutely, no, we wouldn't take it away from her, but hey, we'll pull another one. Another name. Just somebody that commented on yesterday's live. Yes, exactly. Just yeah. pull up yesterday's live, find somebody that commented, and um, grab something out of our basket over there. So just one second, and okay. we will go into. Ooh, somebody gets a really pretty one. Look at this. It's, it's a giant mug rug. And this is going to go oh. to. Oh, it's a pillow form. That's it right. is a pillow form. Yeah, you need to put your own pillow in there. This is going to go to Brenda Perdue. Hey, Brenda. Yay. Uh, that's good. That was Can you good put one. her name on that, please? I will. I'll put it in her bag. See, everybody just. And now we want another one and another one <laughs> and another one. How many giveaways do we want? That's right. 
Okay, so today we might like a... we might turn the lights off for this one because we're going to be on the screen a lot. Okay, I'll go do that. Where's the light switch? Uh, where's the light switch? So Patrick has only owned this store for fifteen years and just <laughs> asked me where the light switch is. It was hidden. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Beth, for letting us know that we duplicated that name. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, we've done that a, that, that we, twice we've now. Done That's that pretty twice. amazing. So, okay. So again, this is an IQ designer project. Um, but again, you, um, uh, for those of you who don't know what IQ designer is, it is a way to do your own digitizing, to do your own um, designs. Um, plus, you've got shapes, and we're going to be playing a lot with the shapes today. So. Um, this project is completely on our website right now. And again, it's based on the D Destiny, um, which would also be the same as the Meridian and the Altair. For you brother owners, it's going to be the Dream Machine. And um, I'm not sure what the names of their new machines are. But um, anyway, um, but again, all of this is going to be able to, we're going to be able to do on the Solaris also. In fact, we've got a whole bunch more options on the Solaris that I'm going to show you. Um, so again, the project is online. It goes step by step on exactly how to do this. Um, I actually stole this from baby lock, their training um, session. Um, but again, I think you guys will like it a lot. It really goes through a lot of fun stuff for you on your IQ designer. So, so. very quickly, because it's going to be hard for me to get a word in edgeways once Patrick starts here. <laughs> but um, if you're ordering the whiskey, the whisk, we wish you a Merry Christmas design pack and you want the hanger. Let us know if you want the holly hanger or the holly stand, please. Good, good deal. Um, so just to let you guys know, again, for those of you who don't have this technology, um, these machines start at about $59.99 if, to get into a machine that'll do this kind of stuff. So it's not, um, it's not cost prohibitive anymore. We've got so, someone from Malaysia on here now. No way. Yeah. Well, that's crazy. Well, hi, Vanessa. Thank you for joining us. I'm really curious where or how you found us. I guess. Tell me about it. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a long way. I think that's further in South Africa, isn't it? I'm not sure. <laughs> how much are they? Um, you know what? Give me one second, Betty. Or if Elaine is taking orders today. Elaine, if you would get those two prices. I believe the stand is $29.99. The design pack is 16. I just don't know how much the holly hanger is. The hanger is 12 inches wide. And the stand is 12 inches by 14 inches. Okay. We ready? Yes. All right. So, again, we are going to be working in IQ Designer to start this project. And then we're going to be working in the embroidery machine to finish the project. So, I'm going to go to my IQ Designer. And again, in the IQ Designer, you are basically are now drawing or doing your own digitizing right on your sewing machine. So it's really, really fun. You actually have this wonderful thing called a Shapes tab. And we use the Shapes tab a lot in IQ Designer because it gives you a lot of pre-done um, uh, uh, shapes. Makes sense, doesn't it? That's why they call it the Shapes tab. So it's this little circle and square. Go ahead. Linda, I will do that here in just one moment when I can get Patrick to um, not talk for 30 seconds. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. All right. I'm actually going to go ahead and go into my open shapes and we're going to pick a leaf. And again, the re real cool thing, it's not, it's a whole bunch of leaves actually. Really cool thing about this is um, we can actually play around with this in editing and turn this shape into a different shape. We so, did that before. Yes, we have, huh? No. We I, have we, we done this project? I did, no. Oh, okay. I did something similar to this. We used this particular shape um, when I did some, I made this into a continuous quilting design for oh, them about cool. two weeks That's ago. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, good deal. Okay. So we've got the leaves pulled up on the screen. And now you can see a big red box, which means that that's the design that we're actually playing around with here. Okay. I'm actually going to go in and edit this a little bit. We're going to actually rotate it. I'm going to flip it 90 degrees. Nope. I'm going to go the other way 90 degrees. I was just going to ask you if you'd turn it for me because mm. I can't do it up on his head. That's right. <laughs> so now we've got it shape, um, um, 
we've got the shape the, the right direction that we want it. We're also going to go ahead and size this because again, not only do we have the shapes to play with, but we also have all of these wonderful editing. We can copy and paste, we can size, we can rotate, we can even mirror image it if we wanted to. All we're gonna do right now is play with the size feature and we're gonna get that into more in line with uh, what's gonna fit in a hoop. So I wanna actually shrink that down to about two and three quarters by three and a half. The, hard, uh, the longer you hold down on the uh, mouse, I'm actually using a mouse here. Can you guys see the mouse moving around? Again, that is my preferred way of getting around in IQ Designer. Um, and we're just clicking on the, the individual tabs until, again, we get to about two and three quarters by three and a half. This design um, is in the shape tab of the Destiny as well as the... Everything is identical. Okay. Yes, okay. exactly. Even the same spots. So when it says go to the fourth uh, row, first design, it's the same on both the Destiny and the Solaris and the Meridian and the Altair. Okay. And the Brother equivalents also. Okay. Okay. So saying that... We've got this now the right size, we've got it the right way, and now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna erase some of it because we don't want all these leaves for our wonderful little project we're doing. So I'm gonna just pick my eraser here. It even lets you pick the size of the eraser so or the shape of the eraser. So we just got that selected, and now we're gonna get rid of the top two leaves. Another wonderful feature up here, Kate, another wonderful feature up here <laughs> <laughs> is, is the magnifying glass on the Solaris. And again, you're going to find this also on the Destiny and all those other machines. I'm going to move this up to about 400% so I can really see it. And now when I have that eraser, it's going to go ahead and let me um, go ahead and just go and er erase the part that I don't want. Now there's a little trick here that I wanna teach you. Whenever you let go of the mouse, it is like a um, separate step, which means that if we made a mistake, like I just did there, I took too much of that leaf out, I can go to my undo tab and it'll actually go back and let me start that over again. I did it again. Start Can it. somebody else go out and check to make sure that the instructions are showing up for them on the website, if you know how to do that? Um, I thought we did double check that, Mary, but give us a moment and we'll see if somebody else can check for us and we'll let you know. It should be under today's date. I did it myself. So I've got the two pieces that I want and then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to get rid of a little bit more of those lines there so they don't get gosh darn it why am I having such a tough time doing this don't answer that because you haven't been here for a long time yeah there we go all right so we got those um sections erased out of that I'm going to go back to a hundred percent here okay, so you can, can I sort of see what something I did. real quick uh -huh. Mary Mary Van Nest um we will show you where you go to find these instructions because I do believe that they're out there people are saying that they have actually printed them so we'll show you at the end um if somebody if I forget if somebody can remind us we'll show you where to go to um download these instructions all right so saying that now we've got the stem the way that we want it so next thing that we're going to do so is So you left the stem alone. You just removed two of the leaves, right? Yeah, correct, exactly. Okay. So I've got, again, the two bottom leaves here all set to go here. And now I'm going to go back into my Shapes tab. You have 90 shapes to choose from. So you've got some regular standard shapes here. You've got the open shapes where we pulled the leaf. And those are all, again, just some wonderful shapes that we can play with. We also have closed shapes, and that's where I'm going to go next. And the closed shapes, we've got this wonderful flower here. So again, I'm going to cl click on that flower. I'm going to bring it in. You can see it brings in a gigantic flower there, okay? Again, I don't want it that big. So I'm going to go into my size tab, and we're going to shrink that sucker down to about <laughs> two inches. That's really professional. <laughs> <laughs> Did you forget how to talk to Oops, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've Ooh. got my I got my little flower and I've actually sized him to about a two by two flower. Okay. The other thing I want to do is I'm gonna put that flower over my stem. 
And in order to do that, it's gonna be better if I rotate that. So I'm actually gonna go into my rotation tab here, which again is part of all of my um, editing functions here. And I'm gonna rotate that flower by about 30 degrees, 40 degrees, somewhere and in there. And then bring him down. And then I'm gonna bring him down where that stem is in between. Perfect. And again, the mouse makes it really, really easy to maneuver. Now you'll also notice that I put the flower where it is not touching any part of my stem because I'm gonna digitize those completely different. If any part of the stem is touching the flower, when I try to digitize the flower, it's also gonna digitize the stem. At the same time. At the same time. And if you want it a different color, it needs to be separate. Correct. So we need to I make sure this. that they don't touch, okay? So mm -hmm. again, that when you're doing this, just make sure you know any part that would be touching of the stem to the flower is also going to prohibit you from digitizing it maybe the way you want to, okay? okay? So I've got it sized, I've got it rotated, I've got it maneuvered, so now we're gonna digitize it, okay? okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, now you've got two different properties boxes here. We've got a line properties box, which is at the very top. We've got a region properties box, which is the boxes underneath the line properties, okay? Region means an area. So again, if we're digitizing inside of the flower, we're gonna go into region properties, okay? Which I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna go in to my region properties. I'm gonna pick a color. We've got a whole bunch of choices for region properties on how we wanna digitize it. We've got a satin stitch, stippling, and a whole bunch of decorative fills. And we're gonna play with those here in a little bit too. But right now I'm just gonna leave it as a satin stitch. I'm gonna to touch okay. I've got my yellow picked. I've got my satin stitch picked. And I'm gonna now pour the stitches into the little flower which means I need this little bucket to pour with. Okay, so I'm gonna select my bucket and I'm gonna come over and just touch in the portion of the flower that I wanna actually digitize. I'm gonna do that. That was hard. Really difficult, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, exactly. This is hard work, I'm telling you. So, and that's what I actually love about this technology the most is it takes the intimidation factor of digitizing out of the equation because we're playing with our machine now. We're not playing with a computer. You're just playing with your machine and it, you're, you can navigate you guys' machines easily. You guys aren't intimidated by it, so it's pretty simple for you to do. So saying that, I am now want to digitize. That's really the only area that I'm gonna play with. The rest of what our digitizing is gonna be is going to be line digitizing. The outline. The outline, exactly. And that's where we go into our line properties. And again, when we click on our line properties, you can see we're gonna have a whole bunch of choices. Now on the Solaris, you have a lot more choices, especially in this particular menu, than you do in the Destiny or the Altair or the Meridian. That's one of the things that the, the Solaris, you just have a lot more choices. One of those choices happened to be a candle wicking stitch, which is also on the Destiny, by the way. But you also have this little menu here where we can pick a whole bunch of decorative line fills. Again, we're not, so, um, so again, we had a whole bunch of line fills that we could use, but I'm gonna just play with the candle wicking stitch right now. I, again, I'm gonna pick a color, which I'm gonna pick green here so you guys can see it. And again, this time we're gonna actually digitize our flower, the, the petals of the flower. I wanna pick my bucket and I'm gonna select all the way around that flower until it all turns green, because we're all gonna digitize this. And there's three different sections to it. So you have to click on all three sections until it turns green, which means we have that green um, portion of the flower digitized as a candle wicking stitch. I almost forgot that I'm going to also digitize around the- Yellow. Exactly, but the line around the yellow. And we're gonna turn that into a satin stitch line fill, okay? So I've got my satin stitch picked up there. I've got my bucket selected. I wanna pick a different color this time. We're gonna pick purple. No, purple's not good because you won't be able to see it. So let's pick pink. Is that pink? That is pink. Okay, good. 
And all I'm going to do is touch on that line so it turns pink. They so can you see can that. all see mm -hmm. that. So nice and easy. Okay. One last part of this design that I want to digitize is going to be my stem and my leaves. I'm going to do that as a um, chain stitch. And I'm going to go get the my sample again here. And I'll pick red this time. And we've got the chain stitch selected, our bucket selected. And again, all you have to do is click anywhere on the leaf or and on the stem. And it all turns red that time. And it all turns red. Okay, everything because it's that's all touching. Joining. That's mm -hmm. correct, exactly. Okay, so now I've got this digitized the way that I want to. Okay, but right now it's in the middle of my hoop, and I don't necessarily want it in the middle of my hoop. So I want to select this whole design and I want to move it off to the side. Okay, so I'm going to go into my selection box, which is this little um, dotted lines down at the bottom here. I'm going to click on the selection box, and again, the Solaris you have a whole bunch of different selection options. I'm gonna focus on the one that the Destiny has also. But if I wanted to select all of this design on the Solaris, all I have to do is click on this little box with the circle and the square down here. And the select all is only available on the Solaris. That is correct, exactly, okay? So again, I've got to select all on the Solaris, but if I wanted to actually, um, I'm gonna include all of the Destiny owners in this too. So you have a little box that looks like this, and all I need to do is draw drag. a box. Click, click and drag. drag. Yes, exactly. So again, you right click or left click on your mouse, and as long as you don't let up on that left click, you can move this box wherever you want. Once you let go, the area that you have there is gonna be what's selected. Okay. We're then gonna move that off to the side and position it to the left side of the hoop, or That's the right, the excuse right. me, the right side of the hoop. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> he even forgot the difference between the left and right whilst he was off. That's for sure. <laughs> Not that I knew that. Anyway. Lorraine, we do have step-by-step -step directions um, that are available on the website that you can print off that you can actually follow along. Or the nice thing is, because this is going to be a video, you can actually pause Patrick. <laughs> so you can watch him for a while and then pause him and then watch him for a little bit and pause him. So, and um, by the way, I am also going to put this particular video on our YouTube page. So it'll be on not only on the Facebook, but it'll also be on YouTube. Can you just say okay for me for just a moment? Okay. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. You are not funny. Like, okay, <laughs> oh, right I down see. here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Lorraine to get into the select tool it is this icon right here I'm not sure if that was your question uh, um cat my demo is all ready to go on that so that might be tomorrow um they're asking about the rope bowl demo oh um, yeah that's right that'll be cool yeah I might like that one, I might do that tomorrow um it is already I've got coasters and a bowl that I have done um with that so maybe tomorrow I've got a couple of options for tomorrow okay so um can I say okay again I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> uh, all right. We have this all digitized the way we want it now. Okay. So now we're going to go into what we call our preferences. And what preferences are is how you want the design to look when it sews out. Okay. By going into preferences, we're going to click on next. Again, if you have the, the Destiny or the Altair or the Meridian, it's going to say preview down on the bottom. So, but next tab for the Solaris owners. And... You're going to see how we've beautifully digitized this design. Okay? So, again, we've got the candle wicking for our flowers. You've got the nice satin stitch in the middle with a satin stitch line fill. And then we've got our chain stitch coming up for our, um, for our leaf and our stem. Okay? Now we can actually make each one of these sections the way we want to make it. And everything that... Um, it, uh, what you want to pay attention to on this is this little box up here with the satin stitch on the top. That's what we're actually playing with, okay? So saying that, I right now I'm going to make uh, the preferences for my satin in the middle of the flower. Um, we've got choices. You can do the angle of the fill. 
Auto is what I usually go with because the machine then chooses the best angle that it thinks is appropriate for your design. We also have density. I always turn my density up because I'm a guy and I just always go to the maximum. You think more is better? More is always better, except when it's not. So we've got the density turned up to 110%. This is what they call pull compensation. And again, we don't have to worry about it with the small area like this. If you had a bigger area, um, you can actually uh, either make the outline closer in or further away from the edge of the design, depending on how stretchy your fabric is. Again, um, I don't wanna get too confusing for you. We're gonna leave that alone. And under sewing, anytime I'm doing a satin stitch, I always turn under sewing on. Okay. Okay. So saying all that, those are my preferences for that particular part of the design. Next, we're going to play with the candle wicking part. In order to get to that, all you have to do is click anywhere on the candle wicking and it'll choose that part of the design for you. Okay. But I want to actually, when I set my preferences, I want to do it to all the candle wicking sections. Okay, so it only selected that portion because the design was in three separate components and you had to assign each one separately, correct? correct? Exactly. Okay. So you remember when I digitized this, I had to do it in three separate sections. Okay, but I've got this cool little chain link up here that's actually going to link all three of those sections together for me at the same time. So if you click on the link, now anything that I'm doing is going to happen to every portion of this design that's a candle wicking stitch. Is everybody following me, I hope? If, if I so, think they're all asleep. nod your heads. So ladies I am and gentlemen, I am not ignoring your questions. I wish she I could get me to <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I wish I could answer them. <laughs> so if Go ahead, answer. <laughs> there's lots of them um <laughs> that's funny <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh so i'll try and answer a lot of these here in just a few minutes it's just a lot of talking today so please bear with us i apologize <laughs> just tell me to shut up well okay i'll <laughs> nudge you next time okay <laughs> all right so i'm gonna go ahead and just increase my spacing to about a 0.06 again these are all um, arbitrary. You can do whatever you want there. And all I'm doing on my spacing is how far away each of the candle wicking stitches is going to sew. So I'm going to touch OK. And it's going to digitize all three sections well, of that candle Well, it's already digitized, wicking. but it's going to redo it to your specifications. Correct. Exactly. Yes. So next part is going to be the... Lorraine says you've got 10 days worth of talking to catch up that's on. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's something Patrick that's isn't short sure. on. So next part of the design I'm going to click on is the little satin stitch outline. And to do this, you are just using your arrows up here to go through to the different colors, correct? Uh, you can, or you can click directly on the design itself. Too. Okay. Okay. So if you click directly on the design. Um, and where's then... your pause button? <laughs> My pause button? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I only work on a remote and Kate doesn't have it today, so... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, ladies. I wish I could pause him. <laughs> That's funny. Are that you guys all caught up? Karen, that was very funny. <laughs> um, so on the chain stitches is what I'm working on next. Again, this is another very cool aspect of this machine. You can do up to five different runs on this chain stitch. Um, we've got the thickness of the chain. It'll do five different passes over each one of those chains, which is kind of cool. You also have a um, a blanket stitch, and again, I've talked about that when I've done applique before. Um, you can do up up to six different passes on a blanket stitch, which again is something you can't do on a regular sewing machine. So you can really, for applique, and this technology works really, really well for doing that kind of stuff. So saying that, I'm going to leave that at default. I just wanted to show it to you. And so now we have all of our preferences set. We're all good to go on Thank our you. wonderful. Finally. Yes. We're set. Are we done? And okay. And now we've got our flower all digitized and ready to sew out. Okay. Pretty cool? Yeah. But all there's right. more. But wait, there's more. Um, I'm going to go get my sample here. Okay, so let me try and answer some questions. Um, mystery. 
Um, Mystery 11 has not started. There's been a little bit of a... Number one, Christine is still not back. Um, I think she is scheduled back tomorrow. And Mystery 11 was going to be her baby. So I wanted her to be able to do that. So as long as she is back, we will start with the supply list and cutting directions. Um, a lot of you have still not got your kits, and that's the other reason that we have delayed it. Um, this particular kit does require rickrack, and we had way more demand for this mystery than we anticipated. And we are expecting the next shipment of rickrack to arrive tomorrow. So we've been holding off just a little bit on those. Um... Let me see what some of the other questions were. Um, I know that there was mystery. Um, Bev is asking about the updates for the Solaris. Are they still on back order? Um, do we still have upgrades on back order? I, um, Bev will check into that. I thought we had gotten them in. But... Bev, if you would give Amanda a call and make sure that she's got you down for one, that would be great. Um, can you please explain what under sewing is, Patrick? Yeah, under sewing, what it is when you're doing a satin stitch, it's going to put an underlay of stitches before it starts to do the satin stitches over the top. Okay. And it just gives it a little bit more reinforcement. So that under sewing is really important when you're doing a satin stitch fill. Um, the gnome dies, we've got our initial shipment in, but we're kind of on a wait list with AccuQuilt for, um, for those, Linda, so that might just be a little bit longer. Um, and I will be posting a supply list for the Dresden class. Any of you that are joining me next Tuesday for the Dresden class, um, there will be a supply list posted for that, hopefully by this time tomorrow. Um... How much time do I have left? Um, <clears throat> and the bowls, um, the rope bowl demo is actually an embroidered rope bowl. Which is really cool, by the way, ladies. You're going to um, love that. So we're going to learn how to make the rope bowls, but how to embroider on them. Um, so we did get some, Tracy, give um, Centennial a call on that um, for your magnetic border hoop. We did get some hoops in just yesterday, but we are delivering them on date order from when you, um, from when the orders were placed. Okay, I think okay. we're ready. All right, so I want to show you what we've done so far. Again, I've just taken my um, design. I digitized this guy with the chain stitch. Isn't it pretty? It almost and gives it like a 3D effect. It does. With chain. It's kind of neat. Yeah, it's kind of fun. So the next thing that we're going to do is add to the design now. So we're going to actually play around with our lettering a little bit. And I also, again, I don't want to get, I can go on and on and on forever on this. Um, we when know. it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to the grouping and um, how to group your designs and things. It's really, really fun. It's really powerful and it's really easy. So I wanna explain that to you guys a little bit today. Um, Kate had talked about that in one of her previous demos. Um, we had to sort of gloss over on it because we had a lot to cover that day, but I'm gonna to try to cover a little bit on how to play around with grouping and ungrouping different portions of your design. So saying that, Sarah, um, you're right. The chain stitch kind of does give the look of hand embroidery. It does. And it's I actually cool. think I talked to your cousin yesterday. Very sweet lady. Um, okay, so the next part of the design, we're going to do the live, laugh, love in our, um, in our um, uh, embroidery machine now. So we've actually gone from IQ Designer. Oops, I want to go back here. Um, so when you click over to IQ Designer, you're going to be in this particular screen. We then want to add to this design, which means we've got the little add button. And again, the thing I love about Baby Lock and Brother Machines is how user-friendly they are. Everything is spelled out for you. Everything is right in front of you. So we're just going to touch add. We're then going to go in and pick our letter, the lettering style that we want. We've got a ton to choose from. The one that I used, I don't know which one I used. <laughs> That was all of two hours ago. I know, exactly. Which one did I use, Kate? I don't it know really, what you really used. It was really, really pretty. I liked it. It is a pretty lettering. Let me do this one. I think one. it's that one. I do, too. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go into that one. Yes, so, it was that one. Okay, good. And so the reason I liked it is because I didn't know what some of the letters were. 
doesn't the U and the V look the same? So I'm going to show you because I messed up before and I'm going to mess up again. So anyway, we're going to type in live. And we've got the uppercase now. And we're going to go to lowercase. L-I-V-E. Like how I did that. We also have a carriage return. Well, we're going to go to a new line. So right when we You know go the younger generation don't call that a carriage return. What do they call it? I don't remember. Lindsay talked about it, and we both kind of looked at each other. She called it something different, and I was like, hmm. <laughs> they obviously, carriage return is from the From the old days? 70s. The olden yeah. days? Yeah, exactly. So we're going to go into do laugh now. And... Do laugh. Now I get it. So we got laugh up there, carriage return, and now we're gonna do love. And again, we'll do the uppercase and then go to lowercase on that. So now, right when I did carriage return, it treated this as one design, okay? So it actually combined the designs as I went to a new line, okay? What that means is that I lose some of my editing functions within this um, within these lettering styles. Now, one of the things that it does have, though, is a really, really cool thing called justification down here. So if we wanted to justify this to the right, we can click on it once, it'll go to the right. If we want to justify it to the left, click on it again, and it'll move that justified to the left. Okay. Once I click on set, it's going to combine this entire live, laugh, love and what that means to me, you can see when I move it, I'm gonna move that whole thing. But what it means to me is when I go to my edit, if I wanna edit these letters, can you show them the little T over here? This is our no normal. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when he's looking at what I'm supposed to be looking at. So. <laughs> so what this is, this is your normal editing functions within our letter. Did you misspell something? I did. Yeah, they're yeah. all telling you. I know. You oh, did it on purpose, though, right? I did right? do it on okay. purpose. Okay, he did it on I didn't, purpose. This morning I didn't, but, um, but uh, today I did. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to go into that individual letter and, and change it. Gone are the days where you used to have to use your delete key and delete it all the way back exactly, out there. Exactly, that's and right. Now it. we can go and focus. Yeah. So right now, this is giant, and it's too big for my flower. It sort of dominates it. Mm -hmm. So I actually want to do some editing on it. In order to edit it, I am going to have to ungroup the letters and play with them as individual lines, okay? And this is what I was talking about with our, um, with our grouping and ungrouping tab. You can see a little box up here that's sort of highlighted. I think everybody's having a Facebook lesson right now. Because uh -oh. Facebook's done an update and nobody can find stuff. Oh, you're so, kidding. Yeah, oh, so, no. yeah, but everybody's communicating about a Facebook update right now. <laughs> so nobody could find us? Is that oh, what no, was no. going they on? Oh, no, no. They can't find where to do the, where the emojis and stuff are. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup these. And you can see I touched on that and it actually, that highlight went away. And now I've got an individual box around all three of these letters. But when I move these, they're still all together because the machine wants to be sure that I really, really, really want to do that. Okay? So all I have to do is click anywhere outside of my three red boxes there. And now you can see that these letters now have individual boxes around them. And all of a sudden, that T highlights up again. Okay? So again, you have to be pretty specific in this case when you want to group and ungroup and let the machine know that that's really what you want to do. So I'm going to click on the T. I now you can see I've actually misspelled and you can see that a lot better up on the screen here. I spelled L-A-V-G-H instead of L-A-U-G-H. So I'm going to go into that individual letter there and I'm going to delete that and I'm going to replace it with the lowercase u. Oh, you're so clever. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Yep. So again, now I've uh, corrected my mistake there. Really nice and easy. Really simple to do. Okay. I wish the, we could correct mistakes in life that do easily. Do you think? Yeah, exactly. God knows. Um, so I'm also going to resize all of these 
this, um, all of the laugh at the same time. Right now it's about 1.26 inches um, high. I'm gonna move that down to about, oops, what did I do that for? I'm gonna move that down to about a 0.6. And again, the longer you hold it down, the faster it'll move. So that's good enough. So next thing I'm gonna do is touch OK, and we're gonna touch set. And now we're gonna go into live, live, live. <laughs> Anton Antoinette, um, would you call us at the Fortin store? I think we're holding something for you and we didn't have a telephone number for you. So now I'm playing with the live live portion of this design and I'm gonna go down again to about a 0.6 on that also. Oops, that's too much. So they're asking if you cannot regroup and then size. You can. No, you cannot regroup Re and size. You, you can't yeah. do them all together. You have to do them as individual lines, which, again, I'm going to try to push them to, to do that because I think that's really, really important. Thank you, Antoinette. So, and we got one more to do here. I'm going to select that one, and we're going to edit him. And we're going to go ahead and size him also. This is getting pretty complex. Is it? Is I it too complex? I hope that you are all following along, or at least will be able to follow along by pausing him when you need to. I'm almost done with my sizing aspect, but you're going to see. Now, once we get it sized, oh, shoot, I picked the individual letter, you dummy. You said that. Um, so initially... If Patrick had picked the L, M, or S, the large, medium, or small, yes, everything that he typed in would have been in that size. But if you want a sizing in between any of those, you would have to do it this way. That's correct. Okay, so I've got this size the way I want it now, and I'm going to touch set. Now, this is the cool thing. Again, as I size that, you can see the letters actually moved away from my justification. So I can go in and re-justify that by touching this little icon over on the side right next to my T. And I'm going to go ahead. Oh, shoot. I need to do one more thing here. And this, them. I need to regroup them. So I'm going to go in and touch regroup. And you can see I've, I've picked my live, live, laugh, love, and they're all highlighted. So now when I go in, I okay. can actually justify those to the left. Okay. Okay. So now I've got them and I can also move them closer to my Can you change flower. each letter so that they're a separate color? Yes, you can. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Another so class? Or another are you class. No, I yeah, I think another I, class, Tracy. I, I, I'm gonna do one more thing. Well you here. can call Patrick and he'll tell you. Yeah, that's for sure. Yes. So we could actually go in and we can do any any editing that we want to on this with color, with um so again you'll notice I've got these all um grouped right now. So when I have them all grouped, I lose some editing functions. If I ungroup them, I then can go in and pick individual colors here, and I can change that. Oops. You have to go in and pick the individual letter down here. Oh, I turned that into blah. You turned that into blah? Yeah. I turned it um, in yellow. So I'm going to actually go in and pick the individual There we go. So now I've got that picked. Um, again, just by going into the design and choosing the part that you wanna play with, we then can go into edit and we could change that individual color. That's what I was trying to do in the first place, is, oh, Patrick. Betsy, I try. I guess, tell me about it, I'm having trouble here. He's hard to control. Okay. So um, we will do that in a separate lesson here. So, cause I, again, um, uh, my mouse isn't cooperating and I just want to pull this down here a little bit and it won't let me. 
Okay. So anyway, again, we've got live, laugh, love, all selected here. And um, the last part of this uh, exercise is we want to actually... Are you a... asking me if I can reset Patrick? Or <laughs> are you talking about something on the machine? <laughs> So the last part of this is going to be doing our decorative fill in our hoop area, okay? And again, um, the way your directions actually have it, it has an automatic stippling function that we're going to put in there. But I wanted to show you on the Solaris, we also have all of our really cool decorative fills in there also. In order to get into those, you've got a little button here that's going to have your stippling key here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna put stippling, or again, in this instance, a decorative fill, all around our design. I forgot a very important thing though. You'll notice that when I did that, right now I have my flower selected. So when I actually went in and did that, it didn't allow the design to go over the flower, but it did go over the top of my lettering. Okay, so what I have to do is go back into my grouping tab and I'm gonna make sure that all of these are highlighted. Now, when I actually go into that stippling, it's going to separate out my live, laugh, love and my flower. All I have to do is pick the hoop size that I wanna use. Would you be able to put the finished design up on the um, website for everybody? Um, so they don't have to do this? Maybe. <laughs> so I'm going to pick the nine and a half by nine and a half hoop. I'm also going to increase the distance away from the design. And that's how far away or how much space you want to give. From the edge of the flower to where the stippling starts. Correct. So you can see my design is protected around my flower and around the three letters on there. Okay. I think Elaine did a class on that too, actually. That's right. And then all we have to do is pick the type of fill that we want. Again, you've got echo quilting. Um, the Solaris now has all of the decorative fills, all 42 of them. So you can go in and pick whatever decorative fill that you want. The one that I used was one of my favorites here. Now this you can't do on the, the Destiny, but you can do it on the Solaris. And I'm just going to pick him. So I've got my nine and a half by nine and a half hoop. I've got this cool decorative fill. I can then make that decorative fill any size that I want. And we've got a really cool little design here that we can put on a pillow or, um, you know, whatever you want to on that uh, for your project. There. So Sherry, um, it will actually sew out in the order that we program it. So in this case, it would do the fill stitch at the end. However, if you have the new update or the upgrade for the Solaris, um, you can actually change the order and you can make that fill stitch first. That is correct. And so you can change sewing order on the new upgrade with this little icon right here. And we can actually pick and move the lettering first um, before the, um, and again, you'll do that simply by clicking on that and then moving that to the end of the design, um, to the middle of the design, whatever you wanna do. So okay. it's a really, really simple process in order to move sewing order. Okay. Okay. So I, we've had a couple of questions. They want to see the design pack and the things from today. Okay. So let's go back over here real quick. Um, so the design is the new Janine Babbage. We don't have it sewn out, um, but it is wish you, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Really, um, it's one of the 12 by 14 um, wall hangings that you can actually put on, it's really hard for you to see this, um, but it's the Holly Stand. Thanks, Patrick, you just make it so much better. <laughs> um, the Holly Stand, and it's a 12 by 14 stand, or we have the Holly Hanger. Um, both of them are Ackfield ones. So hopefully that super answered. Cute, super fun. Um, 
So if we did not answer your questions, please ask real quick before we say goodbye here. Um, hopefully we got everybody answered. Um, and I think tomorrow we'll go ahead and do the embroidered bowls. Everybody wants the... Um, I think you'll have fun with that. Yeah. Yes. Um, again, it's very good to be back. Um, thanks for letting me take an hour of your time. I know, I hope everybody... It's right out an hour, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think with that, we're out of here. Okay. I don't we think done? we've got... I'm not seeing any questions come up. So if we missed a question, please don't... Um, don't hesitate to give us a call or send us a message. We'll speak to you all soon and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye